living space and futuristic cities. Energy in abundance. The end of poverty and war. Instead, prosperity and peace. That is the vision of Atlantropa. It was Munich architect Hermann Zergel's lifelong dream. He wanted to change the face of our planet and bring Europe and Africa together. With his seemingly ludicrous idea, he managed to keep the international public fascinated for decades. His adventurous plan? He wants to build a wall across the Gibraltar Straits and separate the Mediterranean from the Atlantic with a gigantic dam. Without a connection to the Atlantic, the water level of the Mediterranean can be lowered. If that happened, that more than half a million square kilometers of new land would be won back from the sea, an area the size of France and Belgium put together. In addition, he planned to seal off all of the rivers flowing into the Mediterranean, also with huge dams. That way, Europe and Africa's energy problems would be solved. The water in the dams can be used to generate 110,000 megawatts of electricity. He also pictures himself driving over the Mediterranean on a bridge from Sicily to Africa. Sergal's visions know no boundaries. Without water, the old harbor cities would lay inland, and new cities would be built along the new coastline. Sergal is convinced that his mammoth project would unite the neighboring countries. He calculated that the completion of his dream would take 150 years, which would also be 150 years work for generations of people. Eventually, the Mediterranean's water level will have sunk 200 meters. Europe and Africa will become one new continent. Atlantropa. With his utopian vision, Hermann Zergel promises solutions for all of the major problems of his time. It should become a nation of peace, with living space and energy in abundance. Zergel war. Architecture masterclasses contribute plans and drawings and design entire cities and stretches of coastline. Such as the Port de Rhone, which is planned as France's new main port on the Mediterranean. It would replace Marseille, which, after the lowering of the water level, would lie 30 kilometers inland. Siegwart and Zergel calculate that the best starting position for the Gibraltar Dam is not at the strait's narrowest point, but at its shallowest, 20 kilometers further west. The curved dam should span 35 kilometers from Spain to Morocco. The building plans for the Gibraltar Dam's dimensions far exceed all previous ones. The undersea foundations are 2.5 kilometers wide and over 300 meters high. An extraordinary building project. Up to one million workers are required. Sergal and his engineers calculate that it will take 10 years to build. Once it is operational, the Gibraltar power station will be the largest in the world, producing 50,000 megawatts.
Genoa, the birthplace of Christopher Columbus, one of the most important seaports on the Mediterranean. In 1930, it was completely modernized, an investment which, according to Sergel's plans, would have been unnecessary. With the lowering of the sea level, Genoa and all of the other Mediterranean harbor towns would dry up. The port would become a lake. New Genoa would be built on the newly reclaimed land, a technocratically planned town of gigantic proportions, six times the size of its predecessor. In the center of the new town, a mighty forum, three and a half kilometers long, allowing a view from the old town to the now distant open sea. The old Genoa would be part of the back country. Zergel goes to great lengths to appease his critics from the Mediterranean. Ja, für Venedig hat er sich etwas ganz Besonderes ausgedacht. Venedig, äh, ein äh, einzigartiges Kulturdenkmal, ein, auch ein, ein wichtiger Ort für den Tourismus. Es war klar, dass Venedig so erhalten werden musste, wie es war. It is clear to Zergel that a Venice without canals would never be acceptable. A new city on the coast, like Genoa, could never work for Venice. The results of the lowered sea level would nowhere be so dramatic as on the flat Adriatic. Instead of water, there would simply be a desert of salt. In the new world of Atlantropa, Venice would lie 450 kilometers from the coast. For Zergel's Italian contemporaries, this is an unbearable idea. But Zergel has a solution for this as well. He suggests keeping Venice as a cultural monument. The town and its system of lagoons would be preserved and a reservoir would replace the Adriatic Sea. The dam would be built 30 kilometers from the town so that it would not be visible from Venice. The result would be an open air museum with the illusion of a sea in the middle of the mainland. He plans a building, symbolically laden. An Atlantropa headquarters, whose stature should convey the promise of the new great continent. He asks the respected architect, Fritz Herger, for plans. Herger has designed a glazed congress hall, flanked by three skyscrapers. They represent the connection between politics, economics and technology. The headquarters should be built in Geneva, from where it will send its message of understanding between nations, unity and peace throughout the world. Zergel now extends his plans to the whole of Africa. In the interior of the continent, the Congo is to be dammed and a giant artificial sea will be used to generate hydroelectric power. The Chad region is to be flooded and a third lake will be created further south. According to Sergo, the water masses will improve the climate and make Africa's development easier. America and the UN show interest The U.S. sees Atlantropa as a chance to make access to African resources easier, from which they will benefit in the long run. Mittelmeer ist ein Wasserspiegel, der fortwährend verdunstet. Hätte das Mittelmeer keine Zuflüsse, wären sie künstlich gesperrt, 
so würde sich sein Wasserspiegel durch einfache Verdunstung jährlich um 1,65 Meter senken. Auf dieser Tatsache beruht das Projekt Atlantropa. Was das Mittelmeer verdunstet, erhält es automatisch wieder über die Straße von Gibraltar, wo 88.000 Kubikmeter Wasser in der Sekunde vom Atlantik ins Mittelmeer fließen. Gleichzeitig wären die technischen Voraussetzungen geschaffen, um ungeheure Wasserkräfte für elektrische Energien freizumachen. The man who wanted to create Atlantropa dies on December 25, 1952, aged 67.